each of you probably had one thing you really wanted to tell us about the Prophet Joseph Smith. Do you? Do you have at least one thing that you would, that really has lingered in your heart or that you wanted to tell us today? Yes, <coughs> Navu. I just think it's like amazing that he actually walked through the grove that we are able to live near and yeah. we don't really think about it, but it's crazy that we walked where he walked. Yeah. Every time, you're walking right there. Well, you know, that's just what happened when Jesus walked the earth. His neighbors didn't pay any attention to him. It's just the carpenter's son. They didn't know. So, now you've made a very perceptive observation there. Haley? Haley? Um, I, like President Nelson, I was like, look for the biggest, tallest trees um, to see um, if they could have been there when Joseph Smith, Smith was there. And I just think that's so amazing. And um, sometimes I think about like this spot in the grove where it could have happened, but really the whole grove is sacred um, because of that event. So it doesn't matter, um, especially the exact location. That's great. I want to hear from each one of you, if you, if you would like. Yeah. Um, I also think it's amazing how um, even him as like a young teenager, he was willing to do anything he could to help the gospel. And as he progressed, he was willing to um, be prosecuted. And he, he, through all the trials and like prison and all the hardships that he, um, he, deal he dealt with, um, he still pursued and restoring like the priesthood keys and making sure everyone could receive the gospel. Okay, thanks. That's great. Others of you? Yeah, I like what she said. Like, he, he didn't really have an easy life. Like, he was, he had to be, like, severely faithful throughout his whole life. Like, he dealt with, dealt with the religious persecution, and, like, he was put in jail multiple times, and he was um, tarred and feathered, and he just had to deal with that throughout his whole life. But yeah, he stayed faithful and he stayed on that um, straight and narrow path and because he knew that it was a great work that he was doing and that would um, bring back the restored church. That's great. President Nelson <clears throat> and, li and I like to talk about that there's Joseph being hounded and he's hiding up in the friend's Edward attic. Hunter's attic. Can't go home. In Nauvoo. And he's hiding there, and then he says, oh, the thing that's been on my mind the very most is the baptisms for the dead. Yeah. Brings forth Doctrine and Covenants 128. Yeah, is that what you'd be thinking about if we're hiding? <laughs> so this is, this is when we know he was a prophet, is a prophet. That's how powerful that doctrine is. Yeah. It's almost lost from the Bible, not quite. Many plain and precious things have been lost from the Bible and restored now through the prophet Joseph Smith in what we call the fullness of the gospel. But the concept of uh, caring for those who died without a knowledge of the gospel, they're all God's children too. And uh, Beethoven, Bach, uh, they're great musicians, artists, and so on. So uh, baptism for the dead is, is the equalizing fairness for all doctrine that even those who were born before the gospel was upon the earth can have all those blessings because of the temple. Like Adam was baptized, and how was he baptized? By immersion. So I um, think the ordinances have stayed the same. Isn't that thrilling? Anyone else that doesn't want to go home with a regret tonight? Jackson. Yes, Jackson. I think that it's just really amazing that someone all of our age went into that sacred grove and he knelt down and prayed about what church was true. Yeah. And he got a vision from Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ about what was true. I just think what if it was one of us in one of that in that time that he got the vision 
What if it was me? What if it was someone in my school? I just can't imagine what it would be like. That's beautiful, thanks. Um, I think it's, it shows how um, Joe Smith is really dedicated. Like, he could have just read this scripture and been like, oh, okay. He didn't have to go out and pray, but he, he did, and he was definitely rewarded for it. Exactly. How many of you were joined up to be part of the youth battalion last year in June? Did any of you? Did any of you attend that, that worldwide devotion that President Nelson gave and enlisted people? Did you try the seven-day social media fast? Dylan, tell us what happened. Um, well, I actually don't have social media, so it made it kind of easy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, I was able to see how it, like, impacted people's, like, lives around me. That's and, great. like, people who have been just, like, can't go a day without social media. And then they dropped it for seven days. And what they find? They just, like, seemed like more bright people. <laughs> like, they just seemed happier. And it was, like, just really cool to see how, like, just one aspect of, like, their life, like, if you just let it go, it will just make you a happier all-around person. 